Howdy everyone, back at Renegade Blasters with a full review of the Tavor 21 or the Ares Tar 21. If you haven't heard of Ares, they brought out such things this year as the limited edition Scar H, the full size Scar H with a full metal top receiver and a great polymer lower, or the M110 that takes a proper 7762 mag, the quite large and thick mags just to add a bit to that replica. And this one does not disappoint either. It's a bullpup design made by them, and I'm so glad they did. Why? Because if you've ever been in gel blasting as long as I have, you would know of NM4. There are a lot of these, there are way too many of these. They all do the exact same thing, they all look exactly the same, and man, did I get sick of these. I had a few of these, and man, I just wanted something different. And don't tell me to get an AK, because I do have AKs as well. That's another design that I've loved, but, you know, I like a bit of difference in the community. I like a bit of difference with playing. And the AK, yes, while it's cool, there's still so many variations, such as the wooden stock versions, the PMC versions, or the Alpha Kings versions, which makes them look a bit slimmer. So that's why I'm glad they brought out a pull-pop design rifle. This one here is a 1 to 1 size of the Tavor 21, and man, does this does not disappoint. Now, let's get onto the full review, but before we do, this is a gel blaster, and a gel blaster is something that just uses a cup of plunger um, to push air out and shoot a gel. It does not use compressed air, and if you're wondering why I'm saying that, this is for all our friends in other states that need a little bit of a clarification. Let's go with the externals first. First of all, it is not plastic. If any of you are saying that it is a plastic toy, and you're referring to a different TAR-21 released early, I think last year or the year before that, that was made by Jing Ming, and yes, that was for ABS plastic. This one is a polymer texture design all the way through the blaster, and it's actually stronger than some of the metal blasters out there. It's even heavier than most of the metal blasters out there. Check out our spec sheet online, um, but yeah, let's go through a few of the uh, extra externals. So first of all, yep, we've got the polymer frame there. Uh, we do have rails. So there is a rail, a Picatinny rail on this side. You've got a standard 20 mil Picatinny on the side, and one on the top. Yes, it's a bit raised, so it is better for longer range optics, or if you are building it to hit that longer range, such as 45, 50 meters, this would be perfect for you. If you want that close range though, this does have a couple of metal flip-up iron sights that can, you can use for your close range encounters. So, another couple of things about the uh, blaster, you've got a nice rubberized forend just here. Uh, we are looking at getting more parts for these. There's apparently a rail adapter on the bottom, and different styles of handguards that we can get for this. So hopefully we can get those parts in soon. On this side here, we do have a charging handle. Uh, this one does not prime off the charging handle. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And it also has a nice swivel sling point inbuilt into the blaster. Next, we're going to the actual grip. So it's sort of like a stippled grip, but more so the textured grip. It's nice, it's large, it's great if you're wearing gloves as well. Uh, one thing I've noticed with a lot of blasters or similar style blasters like the AUG, it's quite small in the finger area. This one I can fit all four, four fingers in there quite nicely and my finger just sits on the trigger. It's not a metal trigger, it is a nylon trigger though, so we want to make sure we clarify that. The fire select is located on the left side. Uh, you have your standard single fire and full auto. Uh, unfortunately, it is not an ambidextrous fire select, so there's nothing on the right side for you lefties. Uh, sadly, this is not really a left-handed, you know, gel blaster. You can fire from the left hand, just make sure you switch the fire um, to single fire or full auto beforehand. Now, let's continue on with the blaster. So, we do have a lever mag release here. So, when you pop the magazine in, it's super easy to get it out as well. Just pop the mag release down and it slides out. This is particularly better than the AUG design that was um, came out early this last year or late last year, where you had to push a button in the back. This one, it is just a lever downward, so you can grab an extra magazine a lot easier. And did I mention the Tavor 21s all come with a spare magazine? That's an absolutely great thing because you can just go straight to a field and start playing. Next, we'll go on to the other side here. So, over here is the bolt catch. So, I'll pop the uh, charging handle back there. Uh, there we go. So, all you have to do is just pop this and it will close the bolts. It is also a blowback as well, so you'll see this go forward and backwards when it fires. I'll do a demonstration later on in the video. But this bolt catch is also a primer. So, if we pop that back, if you click this and if it has a battery plugged in, 
it will actually prime the magazine. I know a lot of the Gel Blaster fandom do love their mag primes, and this one definitely comes with one. Uh, next, we have a sling point back here, but don't be wrong, this is not a cutie sling point. I like those push or pop or cutie sling points as well, but this unfortunately is not one. This one takes something similar to a P90 sling, a M16 sling, and we will be getting these in hopefully later on in the year. Next, we'll be going into the gearbox that is behind this nice rubberized buttstock, and I'll show you all the internals and how they work. In the gearbox, first of all, one thing I want to mention, do not undo these screws at the bottom. That'll take off the entire butt plate, and we don't want that to happen. All you have to do is push a pin in there, I've already pre-done that before, and slide the pin out. And that'll expose the gearbox. So, it is a full nylon gearbox with metal gears. It also comes with a short 480 motor that's quite strong and silver wiring straight from the factory. So you can run those 11 volt batteries straight out of the box. And I think in the deluxe edition, it does come with 11 volt battery. The standard edition does not, but again, both of them do come with a second magazine. Another interesting design about this uh, gearbox is that it comes with XT30 connectors already. So it's already uh, fitted with a great connector, which is on par with uh, Mini Tamiya's but not as good as Dean. So if you do want to run that high speed DSG build, would recommend changing that to Dean's. And as you can see, there's plenty of space for the battery in there. We've tested with a few Turner G's and a bigger thick cell batteries. That fits there quite nicely. Next, we have the little blowback rod. Don't touch that one. Uh, that's essentially what controls the blowback in this blaster, making it go forward and back. And if you look here, we actually have a quick spring change. So. I've been to a few fields and not all fields operate the same. Some of them have a 300 feet per second limit, some of them have a 350 feet per second limit, some have no limits at all. So if you want a stronger blaster, a weaker blaster, all you have to do is just a quick spring change from the get go or when you get to a field so that it's either field legal and ready to play. It's actually quite easy to strip down this gearbox, there are a few locking pins in there to pull the gearbox out. But it's a solid gearbox that ha I have been running personally for a long time. Yes, I do have one. Uh, and so far, no problems. All I've done is put a bigger spring and a hop up, and I'm getting a consistent 360 feet per second. But we'll go to a firing demo soon to show you what these things do stock and how to make it a little bit stronger straight from the box. Here's the firing demo of the Tavor 21. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday is yes, it does also have an alloy inner and outer barrel, and it has a 14 mil counterclockwise thread, so you can chuck on those flash hiders, or for myself, I chucked on a suppressor on my one. So, let's load the magazine. It is a top fed magazine, so you will have to open the lip to fill it up. After that, all we have to do is chuck the bag in, hit the mag prime, and then away we go. So I got single file, I'll do a couple shots. And now we'll try full auto. And that's all on a seven volt battery as well. So we're also gonna do a try to do a quick chrono test and see what kind of numbers we're getting just from a stock gearbox. Let's just chuck this through here. Okay, let's see what numbers we're getting. So if we just look there, we're getting a consistent 250 to 260 feet per second, uh, around 10 to 11 rounds a second. But as you see, those numbers are quite consistent all across the range, uh, around 250 to 260, and that average looks absolutely beautiful. And now we're just gonna put a quick spring change, yes, a quick spring change to a slightly bigger spring and see what type of numbers we're getting there. You saw how I was doing with a stock spring in a stock blaster. So we put a 1.25, that's right, only a 1.25 spring in this, only slightly bigger than what it was before, and we're gonna put it to the chrono and see what type of numbers it's getting. I've also forgot to mention, seems like I'm doing that a lot today. Uh, this thing also has blowback, so let's take a look here. So, let's chuck on the magazine, prime the mag here, and let's see what it looks like on the chrono. So, looks like we're getting a lot better numbers. So again, we got around 250 to 260. We got more so uh, 318, 320s. We got a 308 there. Ignore the 800. Uh, but yeah, seems to be consistent anywhere between 310 to possibly 330 feet per second. And that's with a quick and simple spring change. Now let's move to the final part and see my overall opinion on this whole thing.
My final thoughts on this entire blaster, honestly, I'd give this a nice solid score, mostly because it's not an M4 or an AK, that's a big one for me. I've got a few M4s, AKs at home, but this one's a nice bullpup design. I really hope they bring out more bullpup designs or just different types of blasters like LNGs. Uh, I heard there's a Thompson on the way, I'm very excited about that. Uh, more of that in the future. Uh, and the polymer on this thing, even though it's not metal, this is probably one of the most solid blasters I've ever held. I've held quite a few M4, metal M4s, metal AKs, and some of them have felt really flimsy or it's like basic aluminum, things like that. Uh, I do like the, you know, the rubberized grip on the front, and there is some metal on this. You've got the metal uh, Picatinny rails here, that top receiver here, this part is metal. Um, a few of my downsides, one, I do think the rail is a bit high for a lot of the optics I personally use. Uh, it's better if you are trying to make that long range, long firing blaster, because it does have a nice long barrel. The barrel starts at around here and ends at around there. Compared to your like normal 15 to 27, I think this one's closer to 35, 40 centimeters. So that's a nice size barrel length for you know getting that longer range, better accuracy and such. Uh, so yeah, the, the rail on top, there are aftermarket parts we can get to lower it. We're looking to source some of those in. Uh, more of a pet peeve for myself, uh, I like the fire select. I don't like it how it's not ambidextrous. I do like switching hands on the fly. Uh, apparently there are aftermarket parts available for that as well. So hopefully we can source some of those. Uh, this part doesn't annoy me, but it's funny how we have to, you know, get it separately. Uh, the sling point, I do like, you know, my single point sling and my QD sling points. So I can pop it off and switch shoulders. This one, I've got to see how it goes with the, you know, specialized slings. But I'm going to be really happy when they come in. Uh, and overall, I do like it. My personal one, I've got a, uh, a standard uh, hollow or an EOTech on mine with a suppressor and a hop up inside. And you can customize these as much as you want. I've seen someone paint one of these as a Nerf gun. That was neat. That was interesting. But yeah, hopefully these will be available soon. And I hope that I see more of these on the field. And I do want to try to do a kit based around this. I do have kits based on you know M4s and AKs. But overall, it's a solid blaster. I'm glad I got one, and hopefully you guys grab one too. These things hit hard out of the box, can hit harder just with a basic spring change, and there's so many upgrades you can do with it. Hopefully we get more from Ares. I'm so excited for their new ones. Apparently there could be a few new ones on the market soon, but all you have to do is just wait and see. Anyway, this is Tyson Renegade Blaster with the Tavor 21.